Hi, this is Chris. And this is Bob. This is How Do Water Heaters Work? Water Heater Basics. As you know, there, as water enters the water heater, whether it's a tankless water heater or a storage type tank water heater, it goes in as cold water and the water heater heats it up. Whether it's heating it up immediately with the, with the tankless style or with the tank style, it goes into the tank, takes a while for it to heat up to the temperature that you want it to be at, and then it distributes throughout the house. The, both of them require a fuel source uh, as, for heating the water, whether it's natural gas, propane, electric, or Chris brought up that they actually have fuel oil that will do that also on the East Coast. And then water flows to the fixture. Simple as that. So how storage water heaters work? Essentially what it is, it's a tank that has a fuel source. That fuel source is firing up through the middle as you can partake on the diagram that you'll typically see on the right hand side there. Um, we have a couple of other things listed that are in there, but uh, you're, you're just sending a fuel source that's firing that heat and that heat's going up through the middle of the uh, tanked water heater and it's heating up the water around it. And then that water that you're using there is gonna be used for your um, hot water to take showers, coffee machines, stuff like that. The other style is an electric style water heater where you actually have a couple of coils that mount into the side of the water heater and it basically does the same thing. You're applying energy and electrical energy to it and those coils heat up and they heat up the water tank uh, to a set temperature. There is a new water heater out that I forgot to mention too, the uh, heat pump, heat pump style water heaters. Correct. And that where that type of water heaters where you're using actually refrigerant like what you're what you cool your house with or heat your house with and it actually heats up the water in the tank and it does it very efficiently it's a leads type of uh, efficiency and just as a reminder um, there is routine maintenance on these storage tanks whether it's a standard hot water heater tanked tankless um, you do have to drain the tanked units not all the way um, please read your owner's manual, but uh, also don't do it while the water's hot. Right. You're basically not draining it. You're looking to flush out all the minerals that will build up inside the tank or at the bottom of a, of a storage tank or inside the passages in the tankless style units. Typically, we like to say flush it once a year. If you're on a well, probably twice a year. They also do make uh, filters, filtration to take most of that stuff out of the water before it hits the tank. How tankless water heaters work, uh, same concept, except now you're trying to heat water on demand. And at that point in time, the water heater doesn't actually turn on until you open up that faucet. So now you're looking at small amount of BTUs to hold a storage tank. Here you're looking at lots of BTUs to heat up water instantaneously because the water's coming in at groundwater temperature and you're looking to process that groundwater temperature to 110 degrees in literally a couple of seconds. So you're adding quite a few BTUs of heat to it in order to accomplish that. So like places, Florida, California, Texas, places like that, they have a um, lower ground temperature difference, meaning their incoming temperature might be what, 50, 60 degrees? Or 70. Yep. So. Um, but when you're looking at Northern climates like we are, you're looking at maybe 30, 40 degrees? Uh, our, we're in Chicago and our groundwater temperature is about 47 degrees in the winter time. So these are, those charts all show you what the coldest temperature it's gonna be to have your incoming water. And Bob also has another article on tankless water heaters and how to size them too. So that would definitely be something I would check out. Indirect water heaters are water heaters that are made to be put in line with a home boiler. And basically what you're doing is you're taking a, a zone off of the boiler and directing that hot water from the boiler to the storage tank, the indirect water heater storage tank. And it has a coil in the tank that circulates that water and heats the water that goes out to your faucets. Uh, it's, a, it's an efficient way to give you hot water throughout the house if you have a boiler. I typically see these in more northern climates where you're running the boiler more continuously. There are modulating boilers out now that help with your highs and your lows in demand during the summertime as well. Correct. So um, just as Bob said, and I like to reiterate because sometimes people have uh, problems with this, um, 
it is a coil that is typically wrapped around what we kind of consider a battery. That battery is the storage tank. The coil goes around it. The coil never touches, or should I say the boiler water never actually touches the um, drinkable or shower water. So just to reiterate that. Point of use water heater. So a point of use water heater can be either a small tank water heater or it can be an instant hot also like the tankless models. Uh, they're all going to be electric and the smaller tankless models tend to use more electricity uh, as far as you're going to need, a, you're going to require a 240 volt source for a lot of them. There's a couple of them that you can use 115 volt, but they are doing the same thing where they're heating up a small amount of water to be able to wash your hands or something like that in a sink. Whereas with these small tank style, it's going to give you unlimited hot water for the size of the tank. Well, and that one looks pretty familiar. That's one of the ones that we actually have over by our coffee machine. And typically you're just using it to wash out your coffee mug, uh, wash your hands. You have to have hot water. And since we're in a larger building, we don't have this huge hot water heater where it's going to take a long time for the hot water to get to us. We have different, um, a whole bunch of these smaller hot water heaters throughout the building in order to reach that hand washing temperature, which is typically what, 100, 110 degrees? Correct. So, um, and that's just per building code in our area, but you'll see a bunch of those in larger buildings instead of having one large hot water heater. More efficiency. Yep. So if you want more, there's clickable links down below. There's a hot water heaters article 101 that just showed up. Uh, take a look at that. Uh, Bob's tankless hot water video. And we're always here. If you want to give us a call, we can answer any questions you have. Yep. We're definitely here for Q and A. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.